everybody. Uh, today we're going to go over the second video in our uh, basic sensor explanations tutorials. Uh, today we're going to go over the TAD and the symbology for the TAD. Um, TAD is our moving map display down here. Let's zoom in on it and I will pause the team, or excuse me, pause the uh, track IR. So now that we're sort of nice and frozen on the TAD, you can see all the nifty stuff that doesn't make any sense. So the TAD is a pretty powerful piece of um, situational awareness uh, equipment for you to use. It's a top-down moving map display uh, based on GPS coordinates. Um, by default, your aircraft is at the center of the display, um, and it follows it over ground. Um, there's various other symbology that goes along with this, as well as some uh, options that you can change via your OSB buttons on your uh, MFD surround. So, um, to start kind of picking apart the symbology for the TAD, um, again, we have our aircraft at the center. Um, always, the forward is always pointing up to the 12 o'clock position. We have our range rings around our aircraft. Those are relative to the map scale at the top. So, that's a 20 mile range currently. So, our outer ring is 20 miles from our position. Our inner ring is half of that, so 10 miles from our position. Um, and you'll notice uh, at the inner ring has our uh, cardinal cardinal direction hashes on it, with uh, the arrow being north and then uh, east, south, and west, respectively. So currently we're flying a uh, northeasterly heading. It's probably about zero four five degrees right now. Um, you'll notice uh, a couple of different. Um, display is kind of around the periphery. Uh, the buttons will let you control the different aspects, change the parameters, um, declutter the display, um, and a few other things. Um, we can, with this button over here, we can change the map display to um, manually scaling, automatically scaling, or off altogether. Um, our bullseye position is up here in the top left corner. It's a quick reference. Um, in the control tab, we can change some different settings. Uh, we can go into change settings here and change what's displayed on the TAD at any given time. Um, we can turn the lines on and off for our uh, for our flight plan steer points, which are these boxes here. Um, on the TAD, the flight plan steer points are, or any steer point is. Um, is represented by a box with a number indicating which number steer point that is. So our flight plan is down there. Um, that's our fifth steer point. Um, with L off, you can turn the lines off for the steer points to declutter some of the uh, stuff. And then uh, you can actually turn all the symbology off as well to declutter uh, if you need to look at like the actual map or something like that. Right down here, um, our cursor, uh, if we set the thing as soy, uh, the tad is soy, we can slew our cursor around here. And uh, whatever our cursor is over, any, any object our cursor is over, will display some information for that object. So current by default, it's set to our airship, or our, our ship. And uh, we have a couple more uh, options pop up, as well as some information like uh, uh, the bullseye relative to your aircraft, and um, the, your latitude and longitude, what, what that particular symbol is, and uh, some other information as well. With the LL button over here, we can change that latitude and longitude readout to MGRS grid coordinates, or turn it off. Uh, the net button um, allows us to adjust our data link net set, uh, network settings. Uh, it's useful for when you're in a flight and you want to divide up uh, or in a package or something, and you want to divide up uh, flights between different group IDs and uh, individual IDs and that kind of thing. Uh, down here we have, in the bottom right corner, um, we have the bullseye information for whatever our cursor's over. And that's also, um, the bullseye is also relative to what we have our hook set, which I'll explain in a minute. Uh, 
Um, on the bottom right, excuse me, on the bottom left, we have our little attitude and uh, roll indicator for our aircraft. Um, this indicates pitch and roll. A uh, quick kind of demystifier for this is obviously our aircraft is represented in the center. The um, horizon is represented by this half circle here. Uh, when this half circle is half full, as it nearly is now, we are basically wings level at straight and level flight. If we're in a dive, um, it will be more close to a full circle and uh, in a climb it'll be a lot less, like it'll be just a little tiny bit of the circle. Let me demonstrate that for you. So if I come out of autopilot and I pull up, you'll see that starts to sort of fall off. We're still wings level because it's equal to each side, but we're not, we're in a climb. So I come nose down now and you'll see it grow to about half right there is about wings level um, and level with the horizon and then if we go into a dive you'll see that it grows around the aircraft indicator and obviously 90, degree, 90 degrees dive would be a full circle so we'll come back and level out so now we're in level flight straight flight with right level with the horizon and we can also roll left and right and you see that roll indication change as well so that's a quick way when your head's down to see what you know the pitch of your aircraft is. Uh, so you know you're not flying at the ground with your heads down. Um, on the TAD, there's another important um, sort of readout you get. Like I said, when you put your cursor over an object, you get information for that object. You also have a hook control, which allows you to hook objects with your cursor. So any other object on the TAD, like uh, the steer point indicator, uh, friendly aircraft, um, friendly uh, tasking information from a JTAC or anything like that usually comes up as an object on your TAD. So if we were to hook this steer point down here, steer point 5, which is just about the bottom of our screen, let's zoom out so we can see, there we go. So you'll see that little arrow comes up, little dot dashed arrow, that uh, is our hook and how it's, what it's referencing. So right now it's hooked from what we have hooked to our aircraft. So that's from hook to own. And we can actually change that and you'll see the arrow change. Now it goes from own to hook. Uh, from what we have hooked to the bullseye, which is uh, a point on the map somewhere. From the bullseye to hook. From the hook to the cursor. So we can actually hook that with TMS up. That's how you hook things. Sorry, I didn't tell it, say that. Uh, you can hook things with TMS up short, so we'll hook that steer point 5, and then we can move the cursor around and we can get uh, information via that. So you can see our bullseye uh, changing there. And that's always relative to the bullseye, not, not what you have hooked. So we can c continue through that, Let's see that inverts the uh, the hook uh, stuff, and you'll see that the the, the uh, bullseye readout inverts. We can go from the bullseye to the cursor, so we could say like we need to know what this point on the map is relative to the bullseye. That's uh, 888 for 494, so it's 0888 degrees for 495 miles from the bullseye. So uh, we'll go back to hook own. And since we have our steer point hooked, um, that's telling us now uh, the heading from bullseye to the uh, what should we call it to the steer point relative to us. So it takes a little getting used to. Um, you have kind of have to play with it and see how it's it's difficult for me to explain because there's so many different it's like your position the position of the, the the steer point the position of the bullseye which I can't show you because it's like a hundred million miles away Let's see if we can see it on the tad yeah I can't it's like 400 miles away and so I can't really show you but uh, you kind of have to play around with it and, and see how that readout changes um, as far as 
uh, it, it giving you directions via the bullseye and, the, and what you have hooked. Um, the other usage of hooking stuff on the tad is to be able to set speeds to it. So, like, I could set... I mean, I, you know you can set a speed easily to a steer point in a different way, but I could actually hook this steer point and then TMS up long on it and set my steer point to that that location. Same with my aircraft. I think I could set speed on my aircraft, yeah. So, so it's a quick way to, you know, hook objects and set your speed, or hook, you can hook an object or hook an aircraft. Um, another, uh, another usage of it is to hook a friendly aircraft to send him a data link. So you could set your speed on something like a target, like a tank, and then you can hook a friendly aircraft and actually send him a data link that shows him where your speed is, or shows, um, actually gives him a tasking, an attack tasking to attack whatever your speed is set on. And he'll get a little marker on his tad on his tad where where your speed was. It says attack there. So it's a it's a nifty way to um, really quickly send stuff um, to other aircraft. Uh, I wish I had more stuff flying around up here. I could show you. Morning, um, autopilot. You have friends that show up on the on the tad based on what their network settings are here down here. So people in the same flight that have the same group ID as you will show up as purple indicators on your TAD and uh, other groups, other friendly aircraft that have uh, the data link capability but are not necessarily in your flight will show up as green markers so it's a good way to keep track of your wingman and other flights. Um, again taskings will show up from JTACs on the TAD and you can use your, your cursor to hook them and set your speed to um, navigate to a point on the ground that a JTAC is, has sent you. So it's a really useful and versatile tool to keep situational awareness and um, know where you are, know which way you're facing, which way you're flying really quickly at a glance, and uh, you know orient yourself relative to threats, targets, steer points, and uh, you know just general general things. So hopefully that demystifies the tad. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, complaints, gripes, anything. Um, don't hesitate to put a comment in the comment section of the video. If you like the tutorial series, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.